For this tutorial, I'm using Bernat Homemaker Deck. It's kind of stretchy and it has a sort of tubular t-shirt material with polyfill in the center. It makes for a really nice bag. I really like using this material for bags. And I'm also going to be using a seven inch zipper that matches the color of my yarn. And then of course, thread to match so I can sew it to the bag. You will also need a small wooden ring that's about 40 millimeters or if you're in America, one and a half inches. You are also going to need two larger beads and one smaller bead. You're gonna need some strips of leather. I'm going to list the size in the description box. You're gonna need a longer one for the handle, and then you're gonna need a shorter one for the front embellishment. The most important thing is that your beads have center holes that are big enough for the leather to slide through. So I got both of these products from Hobby Lobby and as you can see, the leather slides through the beads just fine. I got the beads in a bag in their bead section and I got the leather in their leather making aisle. You're also going to need a size six millimeter hook and a size five and a half millimeter hook. To begin, you will need to chain in multiples of two until it measures twice the length of your zipper. So since your zipper is seven inches, you're gonna to want to make it 14 inches long. For me, I made a chain of 54. You don't want to crochet too tightly for this. And in the second chain from your hook, make a single crochet. Chain one, skip the next chain stitch and make a single crochet. Chain one, skip the next stitch, make a single crochet. Chain one, skip one, single crochet. You're just going to continue doing this all the way across until you reach the very last stitch. So here I've made my stitch pattern all the way across. And now you are going to make sure you don't twist your piece and join the ends to make a ring. Now we are going to chain one and we are going to skip the very first single crochet. And we are going to be working into the foundation chain below our chain one space. So you're going to be putting your hook into the foundation stitch in that chain one space. So working into that stitch, you're gonna make a single crochet. I call this a dropped single crochet. So you're making a drop stitch, basically. Pull up a tall loop and then finish your single crochet. Now we are gonna be working into the continuous round. So you are gonna to need to grab a stitch marker. This is what it should look like here. So go ahead and grab your stitch marker and put it in that stitch you just made. Now you're going to chain one and skip the next stitch. Working into the foundation chain below your chain one space, make a single crochet. Make sure you are pulling up a tall loop. Chain one, skip the next stitch. Working into the foundation chain below the chain one space, make a single crochet. You are just going to continue doing this all the way around until you reach the end. So here I am close to the end. I've chained one, now I'm skipping one, and I'm going to make a single crochet down into the foundation chain two rows below. Chain one, 
And now I'm going to chain one and I wanted to show you where the last stitch will be made. The last stitch will always be to the right and below the stitch with your stitch marker. So in that very first single crochet that we skipped, you're going to make your last single crochet. And then we're going to use this tail here at, at the end of the project to, to sew that shut. Now we're going to begin round two, so chain one, skip over the stitch with the stitch marker, and going below your chain one space right here, you are going to actually work into the single crochet below. And now you're going to move your stitch marker because we're going to consider that the first stitch of our round. And then continue on with the stitch pattern. Chain one, skip one, do a single crochet two rounds below into the single crochet below the chain one space. Chain one, skip the next stitch. Going below the chain one space, single crochet down into the single crochet below. So you're just going to continue doing this stitch pattern all the way around until you get to the stitch marker. And I will meet you here at the end. So here I am at the end, and again I wanted to show you that the very last stitch is actually to the right and below the stitch marker. So now we're going to chain one to begin the third round. We're going to skip over the marked stitch and put a single crochet two rounds below. And then you're going to move your stitch marker into the stitch you just made. And I wanted to point out that if you notice, your stitch marker is going to move to your left every single time. So now we will chain one, skip the next stitch, and single crochet two rounds below. And then you're just going to continue in this stitch pattern, working in the continuous round, doing this over and over. And I wanted to show you, before you get too far into the project, it's a good idea to grab your zipper and make sure that it's not too big it's better for it to be a little too big than too small. So your piece should measure about seven inches, and you're just going to continue repeating the stitch pattern until it measures seven inches wide. So you want your piece to measure seven by seven or 18 by 18 centimeters. So I wanted to show you, I have my piece completely done. It's seven by seven. And now I'm going to show you how to finish the top, which we're going to close it and make that bottom seam. So I'm going to show you how to do that. What we're going to do is take your piece and line up the stitches of the very last round. Your single crochet stitches will actually be lined up with your chain one spaces. And then you are just going to take out that stitch marker and going into the very first single crochet of the round, going through both layers, you're going to make a very loose slip stitch. So you're going to go through the chain one space of the next stitch and the single crochet on the other side and do a slip stitch. And you're just going to continue doing this in every stitch across. This is going to create a nice ridge along the bottom. You will just have to be patient. I am actually going through the chain stitches and not just the chain space, but you could go through the space if you wanted to. So just continue going through both layers in each stitch all the way across and I'll meet you at the end. This is what your piece should look like. Now I'm simply going to turn my work, I'm not chaining one or anything, and I am going to go through the bottom one more time. I'm taking my yarn to the back so that I can access it, and I'm going to go through every stitch across once again. And because this is a pyramid shape, it doesn't really want to hold the shape very well. 
So you have to kind of reinforce the shape by doing this again. This is just going to help hold the shape better. So just continue doing that all the way across and I'll meet you at the end. So here I am at the end. I'm going to fasten off. Leave yourself a bit of a tail because you're going to want to take that tail to the inside of the bag and weave it in. But this is what it should look like. Now we're going to work on the opposite side. I'm going to take a yarn needle and just kind of sew this shut. And then I'm going to take the tail to the inside of the bag and weave it in. Now you don't really have to worry about how it looks because we're going to do a finishing round. If you notice, it's slightly wider at this end than it is at the other end because those slip stitches sort of really brought it in. So what I'm going to do is go down a hook size. I'm going to do a finishing round around the edge here so that it just looks a lot nicer. It's kind of got a bumpy look right there at the end where we fastened off. So um, I'm going to do a round of single crochet just to kind of clean it up. So anywhere you want to, you can join. And we're going to chain one and do a single crochet in every stitch around. You want to be sure that you still have the same amount of stitches that you started with because you want an even number of stitches to work with. We are going to be folding it in half and we want to have the same number of stitches on both sides of where we fold it. So continue making a single crochet all the way around. And when you are done, you're going to want to make an invisible join. This is going to be where the zipper is showing, so you really want it to look nice. So to do that, you're just going to cut your yarn, and instead of doing a chain one to fasten off, we're just going to pull the yarn all the way through. And then grab your yarn needle and thread your yarn through your yarn needle. And then going through that first stitch, we're going to go underneath both of those loops there at the top of the stitch. And then going to where we came out of, we're going to go through the back loop only there. And we're going to take the yarn through there. And then that's just going to make it look so neat. It's called an invisible join. And then you're just going to take the yarn underneath that last stitch on the back loop there and then weave your tail really really well because you're not really knotting it off. So to get the pyramid shape you have this seam here that we made at the bottom of the bag. To make the shape we are going to sew the zipper in at a 90 degree angle from the bottom seam. So turn your bag so it's on its side and then fold it in the exact opposite direction from the bottom seam. Then you're going to want to take your stitch marker and put it through that end. We're going to mark each end so that we know exactly where the seam should go. So like I said, you should have an even number of stitches. You're going to want to count your stitches and make sure that you have the exact even number on both sides. This is what your piece should look like, and you need to be real sure that you have it exactly 90 degrees to the bottom seam so that it makes the nice pyramid shape. So now what we're going to do is sew our zipper in, and I'm going to show you the basic idea of how to do it. That way it looks as nice as possible. So you want to always start with your zipper closed, and you want to start at the end of the zipper pull. So wherever the top of your bag is, you want to start at that end. And then you are going to line the zipper teeth up with the single crochet of the finishing round. So just make sure that they are lined up just like that. You don't want it to be too close so that it gets caught in the zipper, but you really want it to be lined up like that. And to begin, I make a few overlapping stitches. So it's kind of like when you are sewing on the sewing machine, you do a back stitch. So I'm going around and around in the same stitch to give it more sturdiness since it's going to be pulled a lot from this direction. 
So you really want it to be strong right here. And then I'm going to turn my piece around so that the top of the stitches are facing away from me and so I can turn the zipper and see the inside where my stitches are going. And I'm going to show you why. You're going to keep lining up the zipper teeth with the single crochet and then you're going to start doing a back stitch. So what that means is I'm going to be using those single crochet stitches as sort of a landmark. I'm going to skip the next single crochet and go forward and then going backwards to where the last stitch was made, I'm going to go back through the front. I'm going to show you this several times. It's hard to explain. So looking out the stitch that I just came out of, I'm going to skip the next single crochet and put my needle in that stitch. And then I'm going to look at the stitches below and go backwards and go back into the stitch where the last stitch was made. So I'm just going to continue this process across. I'm going to skip the next single crochet and go in that stitch. And then looking at the bottom, I'm going to go backwards and go back into the stitch before. I'm going to show you one more time. Looking at the stitch where I came out, I'm going to skip the next stitch and go in. And then flipping the zipper up, I'm going to go back and go into the place where I came out of at the last stitch. So you're just going to continue doing this all the way across, keeping your zipper closed and lining up the bottom where that last stitch marker is. So this is what your piece should look like once you have that one side sewn down. You will want to knot off your thread before starting the other side and then you're going to open the zipper and slide the zipper lip inside the bag and then line up the zipper teeth with the single crochet stitches on the other side. You're going to have to be real careful. You're going to want to do your back stitches sort of underneath the zipper pull. It's a challenge, but you definitely want to make sure that it's secure. So I'm just going round and round in the same stitch a few times to give it a little extra security. So once you've done that, we're going to start doing the same process on the other side. You're going to line your zipper teeth with those single crochet. And then you're going to look where you've come out and skip to the next single crochet. And then going underneath, going back and coming out where the last stitch was put in. Just like you did on the other side, you're going to make back stitches using those single crochet as landmarks. And I don't show you this in the video, but every once in a while while I'm sewing the zipper on, I will close it and make sure that the zipper isn't ruffling. I don't really show you that in the video, but I do close it as I go. That way I know for sure that it's lined up and that it's not ruffling. Because you really don't want your zipper to be ruffled. This is going to be the front of the bag. So here you can see I've got the majority of the bag sewn in. It's not ruffling, at least not too terribly bad. And I am going to show you one more thing about the zipper. The zipper lip right here, this little excess, it will get caught in your zipper and poke out if you don't sew it down. 
So what I do is I fold them at like a crisscross and then I just sew them to the top of the bag there together so that it sews it down and doesn't get caught in the zipper or poke out of the front of the bag. And then once you do that, it should stay inside and you can just knot off your thread and cut it to the quick. So now I'm gonna show you how to add the front embellishment and we're gonna start with the shorter piece of leather and your 40 millimeter ring. And I use a hook for this, it's kind of difficult, but thankfully the yarn is very sturdy, so you shouldn't have any trouble. But you're going to take one end through the very top, going through a stitch, and you're going to pull it about halfway up and then add your ring. You're gonna take that same end and go through a different stitch very near that one and come back out sort of to the side because we're gonna be doing that side embellishment. So I'm just gonna take it through one of these stitches just very, very close. And then in order to do the embellishment on the side, I need my leather strips to be parallel. And as you can see, this is kind of coming out the, the back or the opposite side. So what I'm going to do is bring that end to where it's actually coming out more parallel. So I'm gonna bring it through to the top and then the end should be more parallel with the other one. So as you can see, they're very close, but they're not coming out of the same spot, and they are parallel to one another. And we're gonna do some square knots. This is actually macrame, but this will hold it together and make it look really cute. So going with the left strand underneath the right strand, we're going to take that end through the same little hole that you created, and we're gonna pull up. This is only half of the square knot, so bring your strands parallel to one another once again and going with the right strand underneath the left strand we're going to create that box take that very same end and go through that box now you have one complete square knot we're gonna make a total of three. So we're gonna do two more. Starting with the left strand, go under the right strand. Take the tail of the left and go through the hole. Pull up tightly. And then take the right strand, go under the left. Take the tail end and go through the hole. So this is two square knots that we've just completed. I'm gonna make one more. Using the left strand, go under the right, and take that same tail through the hole. And we're gonna finish it off by taking the right strand under the left and taking that same end through the hole. Now you can continue to do more square knots if you want. There's just three here. You can do as many as you want, but I think that looks good, so I'm gonna stop there. Now we're going to embellish these strands here, and we're gonna grab a smaller bead and a larger bead, and slide the smaller bead on first, followed by the larger bead. And I am going to stagger my beads like I did on this bag. So you can see one's longer than the other. So I'm going to make this one the longer one. And you're just basically going to knot off the bottom so the beads don't fall off. 
Make sure you have it the length you want it before you really tighten up that knot. And then we're gonna repeat to the other side. Start with the smaller bead and then add the larger bead. And I'm going to make the larger bead at the same level as the smaller bead on the other strand so that they're staggered. And so you're just gonna knot off the bottom there. And then I'm just gonna take my scissors and cut off the tails. You don't have to do it any specific way, just a little bit below the knot. And that's the front embellishment. Now I'm gonna show you how to make the handle. So take your long strand of leather and take one end through the wooden ring. Bring both ends so that they are even. And then bring your fist down to the wooden ring and act like you are going to make a knot. Pull the one end through almost all the way until you have the wristlet length that you want. So make sure your hand can go through it, in other words. So put your hand through it. If that's comfortable for you, it's where you want to end. Don't knot off the bottom knot just yet. Take the ends that are left over and go back through the top of the knot through to the other side. This is going to reinforce the knot and it will also help us hide those ends there. So take the other end and do the same thing. You may need a smaller hook, that's why I have one in my hand. As it turns out, I did not need it for this video, but you may need a smaller hook for this part. And now that We've got the ends. We are going to tighten this as tight as we can. You are going to have to really put your back into it. I didn't show everything that I did on the video, but I really spent a lot of time tightening up this strap. And then you're just going to take your scissors and cut those ends off. And if you tightened it up good enough, it should hold very well. We are almost done with our pyramid bag. I'm going to show you one last embellishment, which this is completely optional, but I do use this transparent illusion cord, and this is, I got it at the beading section. It is not stretchy, but I use it because the whole of this eight millimeter bead is small. And I'm also going to be adding this little tiny keychain ring. I found this in the jewelry section at Walmart, but I want the tassel to lay flat against the bag, so I'm adding this step. You realistically could add your tassel directly to your zipper pull, but I'm going to use this little finding here so that the tassel lays a little more flat against my zipper. So just cut a length of the illusion cord, probably eight inches long, and then just bring the ends together and tie it in a knot several times. I didn't record all the times I did. I think I did it about four or five times. Then using about three fingers, wrap your yarn around your fingers about six times to create tassel tails. Set them aside, grab your bead, and put it on both ends of your monofilament illusion cord and slide it up to the top and then take both ends at the bottom and open them. So just grab both ends and open the tails and then take your tassel tails that you created and put them in in the middle and then tie your illusion cord around the tassel in the center. You're going to want to tie it several times to secure. And the great thing about this illusion cord is you can just cut it right to the quick. And also, I don't like my tassel to be going every which way. I like it to look a little more clean. So cut a length of yarn about five inches long and use a gathering knot to secure those tassel tails. I'll show you how to make a gathering knot. Just watch me carefully.
Now you're going to cut off the excess and I'm also going to cut the tassel to the length that I want. You can make it any length you want. And you can also treat the ends of that tassel with some fray trick if you want to make it last a lot longer. So to make your bag look good for pictures, you are gonna to wanna to stuff it with some plastic bags. This works better than tissue paper, honestly, because it holds the shape that you make it better. So I just shove the plastic bags into my pyramid bag before I take photos. And this really, really helps for making it more appealing when you're trying to sell online. So just shape the bag until you're satisfied before you take photos of it. And that is it. Your pyramid bag is done. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial today. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching.